Thank you for watching MMA Odds Breaker. I'm Frank Trigg. That is David Rickles. He's getting ready to fight Mike Chandler, July 31st, Bellator MMA. But more importantly, I really got to start recording these interviews a lot sooner because we start talking about Froyo and 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 your ugly ass beard you still have. And <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of crap that goes on before we even get started. What? The, first of all, uh, talking about Froyo, how is your diet doing right now? Man, uh, diet is a uh... You know, I think that's a really important part of uh, training camps, honestly. Uh, and my diligence this camp has been much better than in the past. Uh, you know, I guess you could say there's higher stakes of the line. Bellator championship, you know, uh, I got to stay a little more focused. Well, when you're at welterweight, you were known, you, well, I didn't. I knew that you didn't keep your keep your weight under control so much because it was so easy for you to make weight. And then you kind of didn't have a really good, a really good run there. Get down to 55, all of a sudden you're like, you're on fire, lighting everybody up. An injury happens, you get slated, and all of a sudden you're in, and you're fighting for the title. Yeah. Can you explain that phone call from Bjorn Remy? Kind of, what was it like to get the phone call that now you're fighting Mike Chandler? Hello? Oh, shit. Really? Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. Like, it was honestly like, oh, shit. I was at the gym. I was at the gym, yeah, but I've been training. I was training a lot of our guys, uh. I'm the okay. kickboxing coach out here in Manhattan, and uh, so we had we surprisingly have quite a few guys. We got Fort Riley that, that's right over there, and we got quite a few amateurs that fight. And uh, all I was doing was training people. I was not doing any training myself at all. I was enjoying my time off, uh, eating the real ice cream, eating a lot of fried food, drinking a lot of booze, having a good time, kind of enjoying myself. You know, I, I fought four times in four months, and uh, I got that call, man, and. Uh, Hey, I switched into gear quick. That next day, I was on it, man. How how heavy were you? Was weight going to be an issue from the beginning, or were you kind of under control after a couple of days? Oh, man. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. I died it hard. Like, I, start, I, I, I hit it really hard right off the bat so that I could drop a, a lot of those initial pounds, uh, you know, fast, okay? Because, you know, you don't want to have to, like, scurry at last minute to lose a bunch of weight. Uh, so I was, I hit it hard right off the bat so I could lose a bunch. I was sitting, uh, I mean, I was given bloated, uh, you know, salty food, stiff, stuff like that, but, uh, I was sitting at 205 pounds. What? 205 yeah, yeah. pounds? I was fat boy. That's 60 pounds overweight. 50 yeah, pounds overweight. I mean, you know, 60 pounds of like fat and feeling good, but you know, you know, yeah, Did the, it's, it's come off quick. Hey, it's come off quick. There's I'm trimming, gonna start a diet plan, the caveman diet. The tra the trimming the beard at all help lose weight? Does that help lose weight at all? Well, I'm not gonna try it. I'm not about to find out. <laughs> I'm gonna get you to cut that thing off. Yeah, you watch. <laughs> Something's gonna happen if they cut it off. You watch. I'm gonna get that thing off your face. Hey, start it on. Put a bit on eBay. We get the money high enough. Yeah, you're just like me. You put it up high enough, you'll do anything. I'll even grow yeah. hair back for that kind of money. <laughs> All right, let's let's break down Mike Chandler. Um, obviously, you, obviously, you saw the Chris Weidman Anderson Silva fight that had to give you some inspiration. Weidman coming out there and beating up Silva because since Michael Chandler beat Alvarez, he's kind of been the guy that Bellator has. He's the face of the company for the most part. That is just oh, yeah. unstoppable, and that's basically what you're walking into. You're not walking into the greatest of all time in Anderson Silva, but you're working a very formal op opponent in Michael Chandler. He's 11 and 0. You're 14 and 1. Your records aren't very different. But he seems to be getting a lot more pop than you have, and, and they're, they're touting him to be, like, the huge favorite with the belt. Oh, yeah, man. Um, well, you know, what he did in the short time in Bellator was, you know, pretty awesome. You know, so, like, the hype that's behind him, you know, I can see where the people are coming from. Uh, you know, slicks his hair over. He looks all good and stuff. And, uh, you know, he goes to the VMA Awards and this and that. Yeah. So, you know, great face for the company. Uh, you know, but, uh, the truth is, um, I, I think he's a great fighter. I, I think I'm a great fighter also. You know, I think he's seen a great fighter in Eddie Alvarez and he's about to see a, you know, a tough ass caveman coming at him the same exact way. I'm not, I, I really think a lot of his success has come from, you know, uh, not necessarily scaring guys, but. Uh, guys are a little intimidated when they get in there with him. You know, he the pressure that he puts on fighters right off of the bat, you know, make a lot of guys crumble. But, you know, 
that's gonna be it's it's hard to make me crumble, man. So I'm really looking forward to the 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 style of fight. It's gonna be bell go. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. The one thing about Michael Chandler is there is not a feeling out period. It is it is time to go. It is time to move as quick as possible. Once that bell goes, once that cage door closes, you're on. And yeah. have you been doing <laughs> scenarios like that in practice, like to get you used to having to chase people down and, and realize that this guy's coming at you full full force the entire time? Have you been doing drills like that? Have I been doing – yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of the like you know type of stuff we've been doing is bell goes 100% that, that round. You know, and I may, I'm making sure I'm doing that for five fives. Uh, I'm a big believer in training what you're going to fight. So I try to push myself for, you know, at least five fives. I've been doing at least five fives, you know, 100%, you know, the entire time. And, you know, it's it's been working out. Uh, I feel like my cardio is the greatest it's been. Um, this is the a, – a crazy enough fight, man, that it, it might not go five fives. Like the way that we both fight, uh, you know, it, anything could happen, but I'm prepared for it. Now, you said in a, in a previous interview with, a, with, a, with somebody else that you're going to expose Michael Chandler. You're going you're to expose him. Now, do you see something that you'll be able to, you've been ex- exploit to expose him? Or you just expose him because you, you're the tougher K man. You're going to come out there and beat him up old school style. You know, I, I like old school style. I've always been a big fan of old school style and the fact that I'm just going out there to fist fight this guy. Uh, you know, I don't think that there's, I mean, I mean, everybody, like, if you ask Greg Jackson this question, he'd say that it, I was full of shit, but I'm not a big believer of, like, game pa- game plans. Like, uh, you know, I, I feel like I do a lot better when I just fight off of reaction, uh, off of, you know, quote-unquote natural instincts, uh, you know, so that's why I find I try to finally tune everywhere. So you know, if I get into this situation, I I can react to it. Uh, if I end up on my back, I react to it. Try to stand up, throw up submissions, throwing elbows, this and that. Uh, so exposing him, like there's some big flaw in his game. I don't think there's a huge flaw in his game, but I think that he likes to be the hammer, and I'd like to you know be the nail uh, or be the hammer myself on him. You know what I mean? There, uh, this fight's down in New Mexico, uh, and if I recall correctly, from where you're at right now in Kansas to where you're going in New Mexico, there's a little bit of altitude to deal with. Do you think the altitude will be a major factor during this fight? Uh, you know, I don't think it's going to be a huge factor. Uh, <clears throat> I, yeah, I hope not. Uh, I felt it a little because <laughs> my cardio feels great, so I'd hate to get out there and, like, whatever, but... Um, I fought there before, and I didn't feel much of... I fought, you know, the 15 minutes, uh, and I felt pretty good throughout that whole time, pushing it bell to bell. Uh, So, you know, like, one of the biggest things I felt was, uh, when I was out there, was um, uh, almost a little bit slower. Not necessarily that I was, like, I would get tired, but it was... it, It took me longer to start, actually. Okay. Like, to get going. So... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit of a slow starter, so that's something I'm going to have to take into account is, uh, I got to be able to go right when that bell goes. So who's coming to corner you for this fight? Uh, you know, I've got, uh, a couple guys, Joe knows always my Hello. homie, uh, black belt instructor and, uh, Andy Zerger, my Muay Thai coach, and, uh, just, uh, life buddy, Greg Vandercreek, he's also at our gym. Isn't, but, isn't uh, he also your life, your life partner? Not only your life buddy, but isn't he your life partner? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You could say that. <laughs> you guys are inseparable. Like, it's, every time that, uh, anybody's talked about you, it's like, you know, Dave and, and his buddy. I'm like, I don't know yeah, who yeah. his buddy is. Like, what are you talking about this buddy? Like, I'm gonna talk about this buddy. My dog? No, I got, uh, no, Joe. <laughs> They're talking about Joe, man. Me and Joe are uh, compadres, man. We do a lot together. Uh, we really vibe off each other uh, for fights and stuff, like getting each other hype, this and that. Uh, and it's I have this really cool thing. Like, uh, I love it so much. Like, my kickboxing coach is the most laid-back person ever. And he's like, you know, just go out there and do your thing and this and that and uh, implement your skills, and then Joe's over here like, fucking kill him, kill him, this and that, you know, so, like, you know, I have, like, both spectrums of, like, get hype, and then also, you know, calm. And no, and which, and which one works better, do you need both, 
to find the middle ground, or does one side work better than the other? It's worked pretty good so far. I think they just bring me into this like trifecta like of awesomeness. <laughs> That's I can't even imagine how that room is with Joe Wilkin there, just going nuts. <laughs> I can't I can't even fathom it. Dude, he's he's crazy, man. He he gets he gets so damn nervous, man. I think he's about to throw up right before I go fight. Probably no knowing him and the way he eats, you know. Yeah, yeah. Bad habits I've learned from that guy. Yeah, I know he's not uh, he's not known for his very good diets. His ama- his amazing <laughs> triangle, his, his incredible arm bars, but his diet is not something you want to follow him on. Yeah, I was clowning on him. He he's 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 doing really good on his like get big diet right now. <laughs> A lot of ice cream, a lot of a lot of ice cream, and a lot of cake. Yeah. Sure. Yep. All right. Well, thanks, Dave, for coming on here with us at MMA Odds Breaker. We appreciate it. Good luck against Michael Chandler, Bellator, uh, July thirty first. Enjoy yourself, buddy. We'll talk to you soon. No doubt. Thank you, man.